Ready to level up your leadership? This is The Growth Project. Hi folks and welcome back to The Growth Project. Wow, how is it nearly the end of the first quarter of the year? Is anyone else's mind blown by this? I cannot believe how fast the year is going already. So, uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that for me. So one of the reasons I'm hoping to be able to, I guess, promote in uh, in the next episode. I can't yet. I'm still waiting on a few things to line up. It's not relevant specifically to the podcast, but it's relevant to uh, my business, Enatrain, which is a an RTO. It's RTO number 41335, just for compliance purposes, mention that number. Now, so there, there's something happening in the background that's really quite exciting, and I hope to be able to announce that during the next episode in a few, two or three weeks' time. And the other reason is that you might have heard in, in our closing of the show, we mentioned the Frontline Leader Mindset Program that we've written and and rolled out. So we're actually rolling that out extensively for a client across the country, actually. And what we've done is we've taken that program and and we've contextualized it to the specific needs of this client. And we're running, I believe, around about 30 30 to 35 of these programs, which is a really admirable investment in the growth of their emerging leaders. By all accounts, so far, the feedback has been fantastic, really well received, and it really feeds into the notion that emerging leaders are really hungry for this kind of development. So that's what's been keeping me so busy lately. So I'll be interested to hear from you guys. So please remember to feel free to send through messages and emails. I'm still enjoying those, and I love interacting with people and I love talking about these kinds of themes, so don't be shy. So today, though, I am going to talk a bit about some of the really important first steps that emerging leaders could take when they first become leaders. And this is something that I wish I had more awareness of when I first became a leader. I was definitely met with some challenges that I was not ready for at that time, And what I'm hoping to do is to just provide some simple advice on some key things that people can focus on when they first find themselves in a leadership position to give a bit of a direction on how you can get to a point where things feel more stable and natural. So there's no doubt that being in a leadership position, and I don't care how experienced you are, it really can be challenging. It's an exciting experience. It's a moment of pride. There's accomplishment involved. People should be proud of it, but you are going to come across challenges. You are going to have difficult conversations with people. You're going to need to know how to delegate and when to delegate, how and when to make difficult decisions, and how to communicate effectively. So for many people, Transitioning from being an an individual contributor to a leader can be very daunting and it's very common that you come across a range of issues that you might not have dealt with before. Let's have a quick listen to Simon Sinek. We're no stranger to Simon on this podcast. He describes this sentiment nicely. Let's have a listen to what he has to say. And if you're good at your job, uh, they'll promote you. And at some point, you'll get promoted to a position where we're now responsible for the people who do the job we used to do, but nobody shows us how to do that. And that's why we get managers and not leaders. Because the reason our managers are micromanaging us is because they actually do know how to do do the job better than us. That's what got them promoted. Really what we have to do is go through a transition. Some people make it quickly, some people make it slowly, and unfortunately, some people will never make that transition at all which is we have to go this, through this transition of being responsible for the job and then turning into somebody who's now responsible for the people who are responsible for the job. 
And as I said before, one of the great things that is lacking in most of our companies is that they are not teaching us how to lead. And leadership is a skill like any other, it is a practicable, learnable skill. And it is something that you work on. It's like a muscle. If you practice it all the days, uh, you will get good at it and you will get, become a strong leader. If you stop practicing, you will become a weak leader. Like parenting, everyone has the capacity to be a parent. Doesn't mean everybody wants to be a parent and doesn't mean everybody should be a parent. Leadership is the same. We all have the capacity to be a leader. Doesn't mean everybody should be a leader. And it doesn't mean everybody wants to be a leader. And the reason is because it comes at great personal sacrifice. Remember, you're not in charge. You're responsible for those in your charge. That means things like when everything goes right, you have to give away all the credit. And when everything goes wrong, you have to take all the responsibility. That sucks, right? <laughs> It's things like staying late to show somebody what to do. It's things like when something does actually break, when something goes wrong, instead of yelling and screaming and taking over, you say, try again. When the overwhelming pressures are not on them, the overwhelming pressures are on us. So I really love the way he describes these, these situations where people are taken from maybe an operational role and then they, they recognize for their skill and their ability and work ethic and they are then rewarded with a leadership position and that's really common and the industries that I serve that is seen very consistently and most people would agree that that is often how things go and what we know is that technical skill does not translate to leadership skill and this is critical because there are some studies that have been done and there's one in particular that caught my interest It's called the dark side of leadership. And what this does is explore the impact of abusive supervision on employee creativity and productivity. And you might be wondering, what has abusive leadership got to do with new leaders? Well, I'll tell you, what this study found is that where people are promoted to leadership positions because of their technical skill, and not because of their leadership qualities, they are more likely to display abusive supervision behaviors, right? And the reason for this is that where someone feels inadequate in one aspect of their role, they will amplify their focus on areas where they don't feel that inadequacy. So what that often looks like is most commonly micromanagement. Now, consider this, a person has been put in a leadership position, supervising perhaps the work that they used to complete. They know that work really well, so they attach to that. They know they can drive good results from the technical point of view because of their level of skill and knowledge. It is very common that someone will put that focus on that side of their role in that situation, which ends up looking like micromanaging other people, controlling every individual action almost to even to that extent. But that is doing something to the relationship that as a leader, we really don't want. So naturally, what the findings were of this study were that employees who experience abusive supervision they tend to have lower levels of task engagement and this is a precursor to productivity. So we will see lower or reduced productivity in those cases. What it also found was that leaders who participate in development opportunities, whether it's provided to them or they seek their own growth, this has the opposite effect. It increases employee engagement and productivity. So when it comes to abusive supervision, you might be wondering what that looks like. It's really broad. It could be verbal abuse or verbal attacks on people. It could be threats, anything from physical harm to, you know, threatening job security and things like this. I, I explained micromanagement. It could result in favoritism, which does have a detrimental effect on the people who aren't being favored. 
we might be withholding resources from someone to hinder their ability to do their job effectively or we might be undermining them in some other way like spreading false information or assigning them tasks deliberately that we know that they're not capable of doing. These are things that will erode trust in relationships and it will really highlight your lack of leadership ability. So there was also another study called Why Do Employees Lack Confidence in Their Leaders? This study focused on the impact of leadership promotion and socialization processes on the way that their employees perceive them as a leader. So some of the key findings here were that leaders who are promoted for technical expertise rather than leadership qualities, you know how we said before that they are more likely to display abusive behaviors. What this study found and focused on was that they were more likely to struggle to gain the trust and respect of their teams. It also found that when we have socialization processes like onboarding, introductions, orientations, team events and activities, buddy systems, all of those kinds of things, they can play a really key role in shaping how teams perceive their new leader. And what it also found is that leaders who pursued or engaged with leadership growth opportunities or development opportunities shifted the perspective from their teams as as to how much of an effective leader they were or are. So that's an important step. If you imagine one of the biggest challenges a new leader would have, whether it's someone who's promoted from within a team and now now leading their previously their their colleagues, their peers, or whether it's someone externally who comes in to a leadership position, the biggest challenge we face often is just building the relationships initially, right? So this is going to be one of the next things I'll talk about. Whenever I'm talking to someone who's looking for advice or tips on some of the key things they should focus on when they first become a leader is uh, there are three key areas that I always suggest to focus on. The first one is to get very curious about everything. Get curious about who does what. Get curious about what people's strengths and weaknesses are. Get curious about the processes that you work with. Get curious about what people or what processes tend to struggle or what people struggle with the most. Get curious about what people do really well. Get curious about what your deficiencies and lackings are. So curiosity is the first one, is just just to get curious about everything. The second thing is to focus on building relationships with your team members. You need to build trust and you need to foster open communication and you need to build a mutual respect. A lot of other episodes we've done on this podcast that point to those things and and achieving those outcomes. So I would encourage you to go back to those other episodes like conflict and collaboration, giving feedback, using I statements, rupture and repair, managing stress, keeping you cool during difficult conversations these are all things that we should be developing. And there are so many other podcasts out there and books and programs and that you can leverage to achieve that. So building relationships, that's the second. And the third is, to, you need, is that you should level up your communication skills. Okay. Now, within that banner, there are four key skills that we like to promote. And the first one is listening skills. So active listening is something that we should focus on. And this is, I guess, this is the most critical in my view of the core communication skills. So you need to be seen as a very good listener. The second one would be having this skill and ability to effectively put boundaries in place and assert expectations. And I would do this using a skill called I statements. So when you come across any issues, and you will, you will come across issues, you won't have to wait long when you become a leader. 
And when you do come across issues and you need to reassert a boundary or an expectation, what you're going to do is you're going to focus on the issue and not the person. And you're going to focus more about how people's behaviors or and actions have impacted you or your team or a situation or a project or whatever it happens to be rather than the individual, right? So we're separating the issue from the identity of the individual and that's what we're focusing on. We did, a, we did an episode on, on I statements, so go back and have a look at that one. Then we're also going to build our skills in de-escalating situations and de-escalating difficult conversations and building trust within difficult conversations. And we're going to do that using a skill from my mate in the US, Kwame Christian. So you might go back to the episode we had with Kwame in December, episode number 19, I believe it was. And Kwame is a world-renowned expert in negotiation and he has a framework called compassionate curiosity that he's developed, which is a fantastic, fantastic tool for engaging with difficult conversations and negotiations. And the fourth skill that you really need to build is the skill of receiving and in particular giving feedback. So we want to have a highly functional team We want to enhance the abilities of our team, enhance our capability, and we do that by giving feedback effectively, both positive feedback and constructive feedback. So the way that we deliver the feedback can either have a detrimental effect, it can diminish the growth mindset, or it can rapidly enhance and promote a growth mindset, quite the opposite. And we also did do an episode on feedback recently, but we we like to promote the SBI model for giving feedback. That is a really powerful way to promote a growth mindset in an individual and a team. So those three key areas, again, to, to summarize, get curious, build relationships, and enhance your communication skills those four key communication skills. When it comes to building relationships, again, we're not focusing on being liked. We're focusing on building trust, open communication and respect, right? So being liked is, I mean, it would be nice if everyone liked everyone, but that's not going to be our focus. We're going to focus on enhancing professional relationships, not being liked, okay? All right, so those are my simple thoughts on some of the first things that people can do to help them transition into a leadership role a little easier because it is daunting, I get it. So reach out if you've got any questions or feedback, suggestions. I'm always keen to hear those. And like usual, look after yourself and look after your teams. There you have it, folks. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of The Growth Project. I'm really enjoying the interaction, so please keep the messages and emails coming through. Keep an eye out for our upcoming Frontline Leader Mindset workshops at enatrain.com.au. They're in Sydney and Melbourne. And, of course, you can reach out to request a private, customised workshop for your team. Again, that's enatrain.com.au. That's E N E R. T-R-A-I-N dot com dot A-U. What would really help us send our leadership insights far and wide is five-star ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, or even just share the show with your network, family, and friends. Until the next episode, look after yourself and look after your teams.